now from your travels and then coming back and you know you're going to school and finishing school came to San Francisco started Cultural Odyssey with Rodessa Jones let's no, be sure we did no but oh, we didn't I didn't you start, start with her with okay her. No. how did you how did you all come together well you know um, I started Cultural Odyssey basically as as, 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 as my own company okay and Rodessa and myself we were, we were kind of we were the the black "Quote unquote" performing artists, okay. performance artists okay. in the scene at, at, and uh, on the scene here in San Francisco, mm -hmm. because at that at that point there were very few of us doing the kind of work mm -hmm. that me and Redessa were doing. Redessa was doing it on her own, mm -hmm. and I was doing it on my own. Uh -huh. And at, this, at, at that time, there was a, a, a popular series called uh, the, the Midnight Series at the Eureka Theater. Wow! And the Eureka Theater was down there on uh, on like a uh, market right off of. Uh, 17th, right, you know, right where Tower Records used to okay. be over there, okay. but, and it burned down, okay. but it, the, during the day, it was the place where it was a midnight series, and all your performing artists, like people like Winston Tung, mm -hmm. uh, Redessa was doing the Legend of Lily Overstreet there, mm -hmm. I began to perform there with, my, with Idris Alkawa and Cultural Odyssey, mm -hmm. doing my work, which mm -hmm. was combining jazz, and having a dancer, and having a, an actress, in my band, mm -hmm. so we would. I was doing this whole work almost about three years. Okay. And then um, uh, Redessa came and and uh, joined mm -hmm. Cultural Odyssey in mm -hmm. 19. Well, she actually joined two years later in 1981 when we did a we did a uh, a tour of Northern California, mm -hmm. and she came and she joined the tour, and uh, the rest is her story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. The rest is history, as they say. History, history. Uh, and you recently did some traveling uh, down in South America, Brazil, and you saw this wonderful artist that you're going to be bringing here to San Francisco later on this month in May. Tell us a little bit about uh, your meeting her and her name, when she'll be here, and what she'll be doing. Well, her name is Christina Mora, and um, I'm, uh, I'm a part of the team called the, of the Performing Americas. And Performing Americas is a program, a project of the National Performance Network. And for those who don't know, NPN, as it's called, is a uh, service organization of close to 60 presenters from all over the country. And these are some of your major presenters, basically every, you know, all, of, all around America. Mm -hmm. And Performing Americas is a, uh, a project where about seven or eight curators travel to South America to look for work to bring back to tour in America. Mm -hmm. And so I've been a curator for the last two years and I've traveled to, to international theater festivals all over South America. Mm -hmm. We went to the International Theater Festival Caracas, Venezuela. We went to uh, the International Theater, this, this huge World Cultural Forum in mm -hmm. Brazil. And while I, while I was in Brazil, um, I went, because we would go to some of these artist studios where we would look at work and we would mm -hmm. be artists. Mm -hmm. And Christina Mora has a wonderful studio in Rio and she's a, a fabulous dancer and choreographer that has a solo show called Like an Idiot. And so she is basically the artist that I selected to come back and tour in America, at least to come back to do this performance at the San Francisco International Art Festival mm -hmm. that is happening that's basically annual, that happens on an annual basis here in San Francisco. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what, uh, like an idiot, what, like an idiot, what is it about? Well, I'm, I'm going to read a little bit because I, okay. I wrote something that was really, I think, that's really appropriate for the kind of work that she does. Mm -hmm. um, but I say that, well, Christine Mora, Mora, M O U R A, is one of Brazil's most provocative and exciting performing artists. Uh, she studied classical ballet, contemporary dance, and has been a professional dancer since she was 15. Um, she's done. She's done also a lot of work all over Europe. Mm -hmm. But like an idiot is a performance. It's a performance that combines really a beautiful, unique dance vocabulary with performance art and theater. She's uh, utilizing otherworldly recorded music and her own idiosyncratic choreographic movement. Christina moves about the stage as if she's possessed, drawing pictures in midair, speaking with her hands, head heart, arms, body, creating a mosaic of images, sounds, and gestures. Do you see her work speaking to the black experience? Or how do you see it speaking to the black experience? I don't know if it's more so from the Brazilian point of view or from the U.S. point of view, or if it's just the black point of view. 
I think it's her point of view. Okay. Which she speaks as a Afro Brazilian, mm -hmm. but I really think that you know she she's um she's really developed her own her own style her own language. Okay. And I think you would definitely be disappointed if you if you were coming at, and and think that you were going to see you know what what uh, we we tend to think about when we think about Brazil mm -hmm. is you know the samba mm -hmm. this you know this kind of situation mm -hmm. but uh, this kind of dance mm -hmm. but um, she's not she's that's not what she does she's okay. a very contemporary mm -hmm. dancer okay uh, I almost like you know I, I when I saw her I, I got visions a little bit of reminding me some reflections of Bill T. Jones okay which of course is Redessa's brother sure but Bill is is, is you can't really you can't really is you can't peg him yeah. you can't put Pigeon him in a box you can't you know, you, it's, it's, he's so uh, has such a unique vocabulary, mm -hmm. and it's the same as Christina. Okay. You know, she has a, such a unique vocabulary, but of course, she speaks of uh, the Afro-Brazilian okay. as an Afro-Brazilian in a contemporary dance style. Okay. Now, it, as you travel around too, you've gone to a number of countries around the world, and especially the project that you're working on now. How do you see what's happening in the arts world here in San Francisco? Not in comparing them to what's happening in other places, but in addition to what's happening, say, in South America from what you've seen, and maybe even Europe from what you've seen, how do we fit into that arts ecology of the world? Well, one, one of the things that I think that I took away from my travels in South America was that we tend to think that we're the center of the universe. And it's just, it's just not the case. Because everybody... Wherever a person is, you know, that's their that's center. The center. That's yes. their center. Yes. And in South America, you know, they have amazing theater festivals that make what we do here that pales mm. by comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't seem to, to, to actually maintain theater festivals in America mm -hmm. very well. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just not, it's, it's, it's just not economically feasible in many ways. It just, we, we, we're not able to, pro, to, to develop it, prolong it, you know. But in South America, you know, each, every country, and many countries, like there's, you know, a, a big theater festival in Chile, a big theater festival in Peru, uh, in Costa Rica, in Panama, um, uh, Venezuela, all these places have these huge theater festivals and they know how to treat artists and they're international or mostly from their own country well they're international but okay. they, they definitely pull from uh, from okay. the south america because uh -huh. that's the other thing you realize is that you know one of the things that that really is i think holding us back is the fact that we're you know many ways we're like you know monolingual uh-huh you know and mm -hmm. In South America, they're, they're talking about Sp Spanish. Their plays are in Spanish. Their performances mm -hmm. are in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, but they but they they know a little bit more about English than we know about Spanish. Yes. Now, in your travels, we have a, about a minute and a half to go. What effect has your traveling had on you and your art, or you as an artistic person? Well, I'm getting. I'm, I'm starting Spanish right away. I, I noticed it in your speaking <laughs> so, the, the the countries that I heard the little Spanish coming out that yeah. you're working on it. But go ahead. But, that, but that's that's part. I, I think that we can no longer be isolated here in, in, in America, and it is a. It's, we're, we're this is the Americas, you know, North and South America. Mm -hmm. And as an artist, you know, I think that is it, it is just incumbent upon us to really be able to. To, to market ourselves in South America. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't, we shouldn't just be uh, uh, satisfied to go from uh, United States to Europe mm -hmm. and back to the United States. You know, it's about making those inroads into the Caribbean, mm -hmm. making those inroads to South America, making those inroads to Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we really need to do. Wow, that's fascinating. And I believe we could probably talk for a long time to uh, get a little bit more about what's been happening with uh, Idris Akamor in Culture Odyssey, some of the things that he's doing. But our time is just about at the close. We'd like to thank you again for joining us here with Afro Solo TV. We'll be back again in a couple of weeks with another fascinating artist giving voice to the black experience. Thank you very much for being with us. It was a real treat. Well, thanks, thanks Thomas, for having me on. And uh, Good night. Good, good luck.